Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Jake's Take with Jacob Aishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Aishar, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Now, before we get started, and if you're listening or watching this, please give us a five-star five star rating on the podcast audio system. And also, please subscribe to and give us a like on YouTube and also a subscription on YouTube as well. I'm very excited today because I am welcoming singer, songwriter, and creator of funky country music. He has an upcoming album called True for Nero, so please help me welcome Bo Nair. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Bo Nair, right here on your screen. Thank you for having me. I'm here. So welcome, Bo. You're so welcome. So, Bo, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. What's on your so, mind? All right. So let's get started, Bo. When did we get interested in music and how did that passion involved in the desire to pursue a career in the recording industry. Well, like most people, I had a young awakening into music. Uh, my, my pappy, he used to drive me around in his Camaro, and he had an 8-track player, uh, you know, when he had 8-tracks and stuff, and just riding around listening to, like, some good uh, Almond Brothers and stuff like that. It got me really appreciating the music. And then uh, we had no piano at home. It wasn't the best piano at all, but it worked. It was Gran- Granny Nairs, I think, and I used to plunk on it and make my own stuff up just make stuff up i didn't know what i was doing but uh what happened was uh my journey took me around traveling around living in different states and different places it was when i came to california that everything just clicked and uh i felt like i reached a new level with uh, the music that i was creating out of my mind that's awesome that's awesome so what rock tv account so what so you spend it like i read your bio before we got to story get started everybody i read Bo every time i go into a podcast i always read Bo's bio and bo has been around everywhere in almost the united states i i look i love the united states they maybe so united right now but every state you go to uh, people have share warmth and generosity that uh extends to every aspect of life i've had wonderful times living in just about every southern state texas even too Texas got some parts that are, bit, you know, some that I favor over the others, like every state, you know. But uh, every time I go, the people are so warm and lovely where I go, and I have a great time. So coming out to California, I feel like this is kind of a land of dreamers. It's kind of a land of, of doers and movers and shakers. So I'm moving and shaking and doing. Awesome, awesome. So let's get started. So who are your some of your biggest influences, and how did they make an impact on your and your artistry. Well, I got to tell you, uh, some of my influences are a little out of the box for a outlaw country guy like myself. Uh, for instance, growing up, uh, my mother loved to play the Bee Gees. So I got what the funk was all about. All them songs made my booty move, right? Very important part. Uh, years later, uh, I was recognizing that as I grew up, I was watching the Partridge family too. And the songwriting and the wrecking crew and all the instruments down there really left a mark. A Hal Blaine on the drums, you know what's up. And then uh, later on in my life, uh, it was when I saw uh, Baby Spice, Emma Bunton, and the Spice Girls, and I was like, man, if I could just achieve a level of notoriety and fat cash, I might be able to attract a woman like Emma Bunton. And then I recognized, no, a woman like Emma Bunton ain't going to love me for the cash and the fame and all that kind of stuff. She's going to love me for who I am in my heart. She's going to hear it in my music, my funky grooves. Emma, if you're listening, if you're watching, say you'll be there. I'll be there. I want to be your lover. I don't even need to get with your friends. Oh, Spice Girl, Jim. Hey, thank you. Really good. Really good music influences because the Bee Gees, holy smokes, more than a woman, then staying alive, so the entire Saturday Night Fever contract, plus in soundtrack, plus immortality, Celine Dion, a lot of great stuff right there. Absolutely. Hey. Barry Gibbs, one of the greatest living songwriters. You look up everything that Barry Gibb wrote. That guy did some amazing stuff. A lot of kids today, young people today, they don't know. I like to spread some of the older music because it, it does not go away. It's timeless. You put on a Bee Gees song like uh, Love You Inside and Out, you're all inside and out. It feels great. Still feels great. It still hits. That's what's up. If music still hits, you know it's timeless. The further you get away from when it was made. Right. Absolutely, and my, I always tell my folks about this, that you're, I would rather listen to your generation music than my generation of music at times, because the thing is, there's not any big um, big blending of genres, there's not any big, um, there's more simplistic melodies, or more timeless melodies, versus like, okay, 24-7, Bang Machine, Bang Factory, you're gone, out and re- not remembered. 
Yeah, look, look at the best records of 50 years ago, like 1971, 72. Look at the top records of those years, the variety, diversity, uh, the real instrumentation, no auto tune. And it wasn't even you had to sing. You had to be able to do a take where you actually sang. We didn't fix it in the mix. That's why when you hear my music, you're not hearing auto tuning. You're not hearing editing. You're hearing raw funk tree, funk tree, country and funk. How narrow are the grooves of country music in this modern bro country age? So narrow. Make your uh, tushy too tight. It needs mm -hmm. to loosen up. That's where I come in. Absolutely. I was wondering if you're going to describe the function to my audience, and I think it's a really good thing because I remember well, years ago there was an R&B and country album that came together. Some of the top R&B artists and plus some top country artists came together and for some really good songs. I tell you, the songwriting is, is, is key, and I stand behind my songs. I feel like my songs are good, but also I play the bass, all right? And here's the difference between just going do, 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 and boo do 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 you got to have the fun. And I, I absorbed the funk over the years. Everywhere I went, I was conscious of a lot of music, but it was the funk that drove me. James Brown and all the, the Blackbirds, Donald Bird, mm, doing it after dark in Rock Creek Park. Come on, man, that's the good stuff. Absolutely, it is, absolutely. And I definitely think that funk tree could be very useful in today's country because I'm thinking that bro country is going a little downhill and there's a lot more of kind of, there's a lot more of, country crossover as I have them at Apple Music Library, where it's basically- But, but is there, it's just a little bit of frosting on just the formula. That's what it is, is everywhere you hear uh, the formula. Everybody's got the formula, they do the chorus and it goes like this, and it's just boring. The drums are boring, the bass is boring, the keyboard, it stays right in the middle and it barely swings and occasionally somebody plays a fiddle. I am not down with that, I'm down with real instrumentation. I play the piano, I play the bass, I play the drums, I play the guitar, and I sing the songs. And that's what it's about. I'm like Prince meets Frank Zappa of the country world. Where is my place there? I'm making my own place, baby. When you and I'm glad, it, on top. And I'm glad you're making your own place because I'm making my own place because I've been doing this for over 11 years. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You stick with it, right? You got the drive. You flip the switch every time you come on and you say, this is going to be one of the greatest ones I ever did. 100%. It's 110%. That's what I like to call it because you're giving it that extra 10. You're pushing it a little extra harder. You're stepping on the pedal and giving it just that much more gas. And sir, I'm giving it the gas. This is the year of the water tiger. I don't know if you follow the Chinese Zodiac. Usually it's the year of the tiger, but every, uh, I think, 60 years or so, I think 1962 is the last time it's the year of the water tiger. The tiger is my spirit animal, and I'm a bodyboarder. I ride in the waves on my boogie, woo, get the barrel and stuff like that. So the water tiger, super meaningful. I feel like this is what's coming. This is why this is my year. This is why I'm here with you, one of the greatest podcasters ever to cast a pod. Wow, thank you very much for that compliment. I really appreciate it. And I also follow the Chinese Zodiac, and I'm also a dragon. I like that, the dragon. Hey, you're, you're, sometimes you're a dragon in disguise, right? You don't need everybody knowing you're the dragon. And every once in a while, you got to uh, raise your wings, flap at your tail, and breathe some fire, right? Am I, am I talking right? Absolutely, absolutely. You seem like a mellow, a mellow gentleman, but you don't push him to a point. You respect absolutely. his boundaries, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We have to set some boundaries. Yes. So speaking so speaking of challenges and being with the boundaries, so what have been some of the challenges that you face breaking into today's music industry and how do you overcome those obstacles? The challenges of everything has changed, first of all. The way it used to be when you signed to a record label, they put you in the studio and whatnot. You got to do a lot of work on your own. And now you got more uh, distribution channels of your own, putting videos out like I do on Instagram. And, and TikTok and places like that. Look me up on the Instagram, Bonaire, B-E-A-U. You can find me anytime. Uh, we can put ourselves out there, not just with the music, but also uh, talk to people and do things. I go on camera, I go down to the beach and I go places and, you know, you end up uh, living a bit of a public life, but it gets a connection with a much wider uh, sense of people. In terms of the business, I don't know, man, how do you make money in, in uh the modern age, you sell uh, tickets to shows. I'm going to be doing uh, hopefully some shows by the fall that are going late summer. Uh, knock your socks off with all my, my songs. And uh, you can sell merchandise. I got a lot of great merchandise, T-shirts and mugs and stuff. I got a semi-nude calendar coming for 2024 for those with the Constitution to uh, 
hand a little more. And that's you know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you do it. But I, I think it's the live show that's going to bring the people in eventually for me because I'm about to lay it down uh, thicker than a brick, my friend. Absolutely. And also live shows are, I miss going to live shows over the past two years. It's like I'm picking the, it's been a while since I've heard live music and I miss that feeling. So what do you, what were you happy about when you got back on the stage after all these months of being a, a performer? Just getting into the studio again and uh, recording some more and uh, just getting together with some of the fellas and, and ladies too. I sometimes play with some female musicians who just rock it. Um, getting together and playing the music, feeling it come alive is so unique. So uh, as I get my, my, uh, my show together for live stage and people start to listen to my songs and clamor for the live experience, uh, it's all going to culminate, I think, at the right time. I'm telling you, the Water Tiger is about to strike. And uh, my album, Truth or Nair, so uh, what I got is this Friday coming up, uh, I don't know when the, the podcast is going to run. This Friday, I got the, five, the my first video for I'm So Hard, a song about uh, that I'm hard to resist. I want you thinking I'm being too cheeky on your show, which is a little cheeky. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and then I got an, another single, Funk You, with a fantastic video I did with the director here uh, in uh, Los Angeles. And then uh, the album comes out towards the end of the month. Truth and Nair, 12 uh, songs that are going to titillate you uh, on many levels. I can't wait till you hear it. And then uh, I actually have a lot of music stacked up after that. So I'm going to start rolling it out factory style. And uh, I, like I said, straight to the booty you take the Bee Gees and maybe like uh, marty robbins i don't know put that together well I, I can't say the combination you're gonna tell me you'd be like i don't even know man super train what do you do <laughs> absolutely i gotta talk about i'm so hard because i had it was a it's a good song that i can i had a laugh i laughed several times during that song I think bringing more laughter to the world in its current state is probably one of the greatest things that somebody could do. Look, we need to laugh. We need to blow off some steam. We need to talk about uh, something a little like cheeky. Ooh, isn't that cheeky? I don't need to be too dirty. I do have some songs that are a little dirty, but hey, man, I'm an adult. My music is meant for adults, but I got to catch a melody. Hey, gets in your head. Hey, makes you laugh. Excellent. I've done my job. I funked you out. I made you laugh. I brightened your day. And gave you a little song in your head to sing. I'm so hard to resist. You got oh it. Oh my god, that was yeah, that is so great because I listened to that song and I'm like, I almost popped up several of the song lyrics and I'm like, don't say it in front of your family. Do not say it in front of your coworkers. But I'm like, you can listen to it. But I gotta say, those cho that chorus is so fuck worthy and so ear candy worthy. It's not even funny. Right, you know, underneath all of the. Uh, low hanging fruit humor that I like to delve into. I'm a big fan of things that make you laugh and are funny. Hey man, when we were in eighth grade, we thought somebody that had a tootie booty and it was funny. It's still funny, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the whole the idea is behind all this, you're going to hear a serious songwriter, a serious musician. You can be a serious musician without having to sit up there and sing some sort of serious song. I want to sing a song about a menage a trois I had. I'm going to sing it. It's going to be from the heart uh, and a little bit from the lungs. And not to mention the fact, and not to mention the fact, people have made careers out of those. Like, look at Weird Al. Uh, he don't exactly have a failure of a career. And that guy was in school for like architecture or something. He just happened to go take a cassette tape and give it to Doctor Demento, who played it and had him on the show. So you get out there with your music. You get out there any way you can. And uh, nowadays, the proverbial cassette tape is videos and podcasts and everybody in the world can see it and i hope they do i i'm working on more videos i'm having a fun time getting out there and uh, strip my stuff around the city Ladies. awesome so i want to talk to you about your upcoming album true for nerd that you mentioned earlier so can you describe this album to my audience and how and the recording process of it well as you may expect i'm an inspired man when I came out here to California, uh, I tried out some of California's uh, greener options and found myself in a whole new mental space that I had never been before. And once I started writing songs last year, well, it's like the floodgates opened up. I hold up myself in my, my little studio cabin I got, and I worked these songs. And I, I wrote a lot more songs than what's coming out, but I don't want to overwhelm everybody. So these are the first 12. And Truth or Nay really lays out a variety of tunage. Uh, you got stuff that will funk your booty. There's also a couple of tear jerking ballads. Uh, maybe, maybe not a tear, but they're, they're jerking ballads for sure. They're great. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys my tunes and then gets hungry for more because 
uh, sooner than later, I'm going to keep dropping these abs on you. And you're going to be like, how many abs does this guy have? All of them. I'm ready. The water tiger's coming. The claw's way out. And that's why I've noticed a lot about, especially with country music, especially with country music, it seems like every year that there are artists that do something every year, and then there's artists, like, especially with pop, they do two years, and then, like, or every three years. So how so do you got yourself ready? Well, that's the business. That's the business says you can only put out so much and work it for so long and do it like this. This is how it has to be done, and everything has changed. Do you know why no other artist has put out eight, albums in one year because they don't write them like that right greg ken they don't write them like that anymore listen i write them like that i'm putting these records out and you're gonna see an outflow that no artist could touch i'm cl- coming to stake my claim you understand that's it's just let the music do the talking joe perry style i'm not coming to talk no uh, big talk i'm coming to walk the walk i'm Truth glad to hear it so have you thought about collaborations with like singers, with songwriters, with musicians? All the time. Call me up, Miranda Lambert. Let's collaborate. I like to get together and do some uh, collaborating. I would love to write songs with everybody and anybody. I'd love to play some funky bass. Somebody's like, man, this song seems really s- s- just sterile. Something's just not right about it. Call in Bo Nair. Let him come in and funk up on that bass. Let him lay down some of that funky keyboards. Little Rose, little clavinet with the wah-wah pedal. Woo! Oh, I'll lay that funk down so hard. You will watch many crackers start to crack. I'm telling you. Awesome, awesome. So what, as you said, you are on top of social media. So what are some of your favorite platforms? I think right now, uh, Instagram's kind of where people been uh, following me the most. Um, It's hard. TikTok is not quite ready for what I have to lay out there. And I get it. I get it. There's a lot of uh, younger people on TikTok don't need necessarily uh, a a more adult influence, if you know what I mean. So uh, Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be where the people need me. Uh, Although I I heard that uh, teenage boys find me hilarious, which is pretty funny because if I was a teenage boy, I would find me hilarious too. (laughs) I'm so hard, really. Now, who knows? They might be playing some talent shows. (laughs) Well, I guess I, I like to laugh, too. You ever see Mary Poppins? You ever see that movie? Oh, my God. I watched that a million times. So I like to laugh when they're all laughing. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. Look, there's so much hurt and hate in the world. Uh, I, the world needs laughter and, and funkiness and ridiculousness and all that. I won't bring that. I think that's a gift. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to stick some hooks in your head and a little earworm in your ear and a little uh, wiggle in, it, in your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got to get started. We got to start winding down our conversation. So do you, but, but what do you have any, if what, if you had a chance to meet with an upcoming song or singer songwriter that wants to take their career to the next level, what advice do you share? You have to be as true to your vision as possible. Don't water it down for nobody. Don't let anybody tell you this is what you're supposed to do because this is the way that people do it. The thing is, the people who did the greatest stuff did stuff that sometimes people wasn't ready for, but it didn't look or sound like anything else. You look at David Bowie, Life on Mars, coming out in that video, looking like that with the hair and the eyes. Like, of course I transformed myself into Ziggy Stardust. What are you doing today? Right? So, uh, that kind of uh, vision must not be tainted with other people's fears or ideas of what people will buy or the market will sell. My music on the front and isn't necessarily something you're like, take this to market. But guess what? As it gets out there and the function weaves its magic on the people, on the ears, on the minds and the booties of people worldwide, it's going to have its effect. And my wing of the building will expand. Every great artist, Makes their own way. That's right. Jimmy Hendrix, ah. you name it. They, they, they did something that nobody else could do and hasn't done since. A singular star. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my final question, are you ready, Bo? I am prepared. All right. So where can my audience find your music? And also, where can my audience find you on social media? 
Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I do put my videos up on the YouTube, uh, but Instagram is pretty much the place to, uh, to find me the most. I, I go on there sometimes, at least leave comments for people so we can get a little chat about what's going on. Um, Facebook, uh, TikTok, but Instagram seems to be the place. Hey, who knew? I also got a website, bonair.com. And I would love to uh, hear from people. And as these songs roll out, my music's going to be streaming. Right now, it's on the SoundCloud, along with uh, some answer machine messages that I left for some different people that might have had a different kind of day once they had to listen. Uh, I think you'll appreciate those there. Uh, I've actually listened to some of them before we got on, and they were hysterical. You are welcome. <laughs> I had a good time making them. And that's what I that's what I like to put out. So that's on the SoundCloud. Some of it's on streaming. Wherever you stream music or download it, look for Bonaire. Wherever you go on the SoundCloud, you will find Bonaire. And eventually, more will be coming out. So just stay in those places, and I'll be right in your faces. Boom. Awesome, Bo. So, guys, if you had a chance, if you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elijah podcast, visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and Spreaker. It's Jake's Take with Jacob Elijah J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elishar, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. So, Bo, as I said earlier, 11 years this August. Uh, that's jakes-shake.com, my platform. So, if you have any articles, interviews, and reviews, you can find it there. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on 11 years. That's fantastic. May you have many, many more. I have one more plug to say, if you are financially able to, please consider heading to PayPal to help keep jakes.shake.com up and running. I'm a one-man man. I do everything, including preparing for questions to talk to Bill Air and to schedule all the interviews and to edit some podcasts. So please, if you're, please, that'd be great. Bo, thank you so much. I have a feeling we're going to be here a lot of you for years to come. Thank you very much. Great to see you. See you soon. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.